The fourth morning uh, hour order of business, uh, recognition of members' requests for points of personal privilege. Speaker requests members to use their request to speak button to signify their desire to be recognized. Delegate from Portsmouth, Delegate Heretic. Mr. Speaker, I rise on a point of personal privilege. Delegate as the floor. Mr. Speaker, members of the House, citizens here of Virginia, it's often said that integrity is how you act when no one is watching. Over the past several weeks, too many backroom conversations about redistricting have, have been held out of the public eye and with no transparency whatsoever. Today, our citizens are watching what we do. All of Virginia is watching what we do. Our nation is watching what we do. Mr. Speaker, in 2015, I was elected to this House in part on the basis of a promise I made to the voters of my district to support independent, nonpartisan redistricting reform. Along with our colleague, Republican Senator Emmett Hanger, I was proud to have been endorsed by One Virginia 2021, the organization that is truly leading on the issue of nonpartisan redistricting reform. Many of our colleagues on both sides of the aisle, including a good many who joined us in the wave of 2017, promised their voters the same straightforward agenda. Voters all across this Commonwealth in our nation oppose the time-dishonored tradition of gerrymandering districts, which allows politicians to pick their constituents and not the other way around. While this problem is nearly as old as our nation itself, citizens from across the political spectrum are now more than ever fed up with this corrupt political culture. Mr. Speaker, we have at this moment the real and fleeting opportunity to lead our Commonwealth out of this gutter and to make a powerful and historic statement that our Commonwealth and our citizens, as we approach our 400th anniversary as a legislature, we have the opportunity to carve out a legacy which will stand as a shining testimony to the power of what good men and women on both sides of the aisle can do when they put this Commonwealth ahead of petty partisan politics. We have the opportunity to act collectively and without more partisan rancor to demonstrate to this nation, to this Commonwealth, and to each citizen that we serve by our actions and not by mere more empty words what we actually mean by the Virginia way. Mr. Speaker, the proposed redistricting map we've seen so far today goes well beyond anything that the federal court has directed us to do. It's self-serving political power grab. It's gerrymandering in response to gerrymandering. It's tit for tat. It's, in the immortal words of the baseball great Yogi Berra, it is deja vu all over again. But let's be honest, Mr. Speaker, turning around and doing to your side exactly what the Republicans did to us in 2011 doesn't make this Commonwealth any better. It doesn't settle any scores. In fact, it merely creates new ones. The time has come to finally bury this dinosaur of political corruption we all know is gerrymandering. I'm not the only member of this House who was elected in part because I took a strong position in favor of independent nonpartisan redistricting reform. There are many on my side who feel as I do and are ready to stand for this principle over politics. And I know, Mr. Speaker, there are solid leaders on your side who will as well. Today, let us join together, regardless of the cynical political voices that try to persuade us to do. Let us join together and put our Commonwealth and the future of its citizens above our own petty political ambitions. Let us join together and finally, finally, make the monumental and patriotic act of looking gerrymandering squarely in the eye, calling it out for what it truly is, and establishing genuine redistricting reform and drawing districts that actually serve the commonwealths of the citizens of Virginia. And I thank you, Mr. Speaker.